there folks welcome back to monster roots farm so today this is just going to be a discussion video for you guys a little uh little thought invoking video so if you're not into that by all means check out one of my other videos about cows or pigs or whatever else in, interests you uh, but today we're going to be discussing uh, something that i definitely struggle with and it's finding a job that you love um, but also being a mature, responsible adult. And so what I mean by that is, is I used to work in industrial maintenance. Really enjoyed it. I liked getting dirty. I liked fixing things. I really like helping people. And I think that's where I got the interest in it is helping people. Um, but it's different in an industrial maintenance standpoint. So uh, let's take a, a bread bagging machine. Yes, there's an operator that operates it. And yes, when it breaks, they do want me to fix it. <clears throat> excuse me, and they do want me to make it run better or run at all so that they can physically produce product. But in that environment, it is not a, oh, hey, thank you for showing up and fixing this machine. Generally, what happens is, is you get some grumpy person because the machine has been broken down four or five or 10 times that day and they never once called you to come fix it, um, or they're the one causing the breakdown. And so it's just grump all around. And then the operator gets grumpy, so supervisor gets grumpy, and then you have to deal with two grumpy people. And then generally, if supervisor is grumpy enough, you then have to deal with your own supervisor who's grumpy at you for 99.9% .9 of the time, not your fault um, or not your problem or anything of that sort. So <clears throat> I have been struggling with that because I enjoy maintenance but everything I see and do with maintenance just doesn't seem to work out. Um, I'm rather intelligent. Uh, I don't wanna boast too much because I'm also humble, but uh, I'm a little smarter than your average bear or your average bully bull here. I'm, I'm a little bit smarter than Mr. Murph. And the issue with that is, is that I generally were working with guys that had a bunch of experience. So since I was working with guys that had a bunch of experience, I ended up in a situation where my intelligence was threatening. Let's just say that. Uh, in one specific example, I worked in a machine shop. Uh, this gentleman was struggling to fix a uh, lathe um, and he had 30 years of experience or so I was told fixing lathes. But every time I pointed out what the actual problem was, so there was a bracket that held on an actuator that opened and closed the tool so that you could change tools or bars or whatever, um, that was broken. And I pointed out to him twice and he said, ah, that's probably okay. But that was actually the problem. When they called somebody out, that was actually the problem. But me telling this guy this was a problem because I was threatening. I was telling him he was doing something wrong and I didn't have any experience. So sometimes you just have to be patient. You know, I started this out saying, you gotta find out what you love, find out what you can do, what you're good at and do it. You gotta be patient. So for me, I now work in production, let's just say. I'm a general laborer, basically. I run a forklift, you know? So I run a forklift in a freezer and, well, in reality, it's really not a bad job. It's pretty easy, uh, not very physically demanding. I mean, it is in a freezer, so I have to wear a bunch of clothes all day every day, but it ain't that big of a deal to me. But I am definitely good at it, but I also feel like anybody could be good at it. It doesn't take much to operate a forklift. You know, it's like driving a car. Everybody can drive a car. You know, the controls might be different, but everyone can do it. I don't know that I want to do this job forever. I don't know that I love this job, but right now I love it because of several different reasons. I'm not getting harassed by people, uh, bothered, whatever. Harassed may be a little bit of an aggressive term. You know, I don't have grumpy supervisors running up to me saying, why is this machine down for 20 minutes when I just got told about it when that supervisor came up and asked me why it was down for 20 minutes. You know, I don't have grumpy coworkers that won't listen to me when I was working with the professional that came in and fixed the machine the week prior. Uh, and they wouldn't listen to me because I'm too young. I don't know what I'm doing. And, you know, they actually claimed a safety concern because I just went and did whatever I wanted, even though I explained to them that that's not what we were supposed to do because this professional that came in and showed me how to do it said not to do that. So it might just take time, you know, and, and that's what sucks, right? Is so like, I'm rather young, you know, 
I don't have much time under my belt and I'm afraid to just job hop to find something I wanna do. So for me, I like doing slightly different things every day. Now, yes, working in a, a cooler in a production job, I do the same thing every day, but it's a little different, you know, sometimes, cause I deal with wrap skids of meat. Sometimes the skids are lean in, sometimes they're real fat at the bottom. Sometimes they're a narrow little toothpick all the way up. So I get a little bit of variety with that and then, um, moving stuff around and so I, I do different things but I could not I don't think I could sit in an office and be a secretary I don't think I could sit in an office and be an accountant I just don't know that I could do that um, so for me I think that's where I run into issues is 99.9% .9 of the jobs in my area I either can't do or don't think I can do so I have to be selective and I have to be selective because I already have and I don't want to say a questionable job history because I think I'm still young yet and I think it's expected but I have a questionable job history for the field that I was in. So for example if a young 20 some year old kid worked at McDonald's at Pizza Hut at Arby's at Wendy's and he walked into your accounting firm you'd be like okay that makes sense you know 20 let's just say 25 had five or six of those food production jobs and changed the job every year but for me it was i had one job i was at two and a half years another i was at a year and then another i was only at three months which that's a whole nother sketchy topic so in a in a field where it's more mature that's ah here you go that's like being a manager which maybe a manager is a bad example because I know a lot of managers that do bounce around. Um, but like that, being a manager at a job for a year, they're going to be like, huh, that's kind of weird. But if you had six jobs in one year and you just want to work on the assembly floor, they wouldn't care. So I think it has to do with that too. It's kind of like the industry and the jobs that you're looking at kind of have different requirements in that regard too. So, but... I just wanted to make this video to kind of talk about some of what I'm having to deal with and to say, uh, just keep at it. Find what you love. If that takes 10 years, 15 years, 30 years, then that's how long it takes. You know, you don't have to pop out of the womb per se and go right into being the CEO of multi-million dollar companies. You know, it's okay to kind of work up. It's okay to kind of work around. Yeah, you'll have some consequences like me. I'm going to have to stick at this job for a couple years if I want to do anything else because, well, no one's going to really want to move or move me around. But I now have that experience. So if a maintenance job opens up in this company I'm currently at and I want to take it, maybe I'll get the opportunity. So, but anyhow, guys, just a little bit of telling the Internet about my problems, airing out my dirty laundry, per se, but... Maybe someone will see that laundry on the clothesline and say, hey, I got dirty laundry like that too. Someone's going through it with me. That's cool. So anyhow, guys, see you on the next one.